flights unhappily arrive as safely as that one. The aeroplane with its load of fuel is a potential inferno when things go wrong. The problem of crash fires is a pressing one. Most aircraft crashes occur near to airports and 15% of the fatalities are directly due to fire. Passenger accommodation improvements aimed at reducing impact fatalities could mean that more people will survive impact only to burn in the ensuing fire. This points the need for reducing the incidence of fire. In the crash situation, there are always plenty of ignition sources present. Hot surfaces, friction sparks, arcing electrical equipment, engines, possibly still running, and so on. The extent of the hazard will therefore depend largely on the flammable atmosphere present and can be considerably reduced by altering the properties of the principal flammable material, the aircraft fuel. The Royal Aircraft Establishment is Europe's largest research and development establishment for aeronautics. Its work covers all aspects of aviation and among them one of the most important is that of aircraft safety. A specific line of research which is being pursued by the materials department of the establishment is the problem of producing a safer aircraft fuel. Fires can be produced by igniting flammable vapours if the fuel is volatile enough to produce a critical amount of vapour. Thus, petrol ignites readily at ambient temperature, whereas kerosene does not. However, when kerosene is subjected to the high shearing stresses produced in crashes, a fine mist can be created which will ignite almost as readily as a vapour. The high mobility of liquid fuels can also cause them to be conveyed to ignition sources by conduction wetting of intervening surfaces. Attempts to overcome the fire hazard by using gelled fuel introduced almost insuperable handling problems. An investigation into fuel safety was begun by Materials Department in 1967 and as a result of their work a contract was placed with Imperial Chemical Industries to seek ways of producing safer fuels. Close liaison with ICI was maintained by Materials Department who specified the three properties desirable in such a fuel. Low mobility, reduced tendency to misting, low rate of flame spread. While an ideally safe fuel would have each of these properties, it would lead to unsurmountable problems in engines, fuel systems and economics. It soon became clear that the second of the specified properties reduced tendency to misting, offered a reasonable compromise. The first promising fuel to emerge was similar in general appearance to kerosene and utterly different from the thickened fuels. To get mist explosions, the mist must be finely divided and laboratory tests indicated that the ICI fuel had far less tendency than kerosene to produce mist under high shearing conditions. If kerosene is dropped into a can, it produces a fine mist. Modified fuel produces only a few discrete globules. If a flame is introduced into the can, the kerosene mist can be easily ignited. The modified fuel cannot. This demonstration, using a time-expired aircraft, simulates the practical situation in which fuel falls from a wing tank onto a concrete runway, or maybe onto the flight deck of an aircraft carrier. Kerosene is clearly a potential fire hazard under these conditions. When the test is repeated using modified fuel, FM4, no ignition occurs. Once the potential of the modified fuel had been established, the next problem for materials department was to decide upon a test that would simulate a severe but survivable crash situation. In the formation of mists which govern the incidence of fire, a primary factor is the velocity of fuel relative to the surrounding airstream. 
Materials Department designed a laboratory scale apparatus to accelerate fuel samples to speeds of 80 miles an hour and subject them to a deceleration of up to 25 g. A weighted bung was used which ejected when the fuel tank was decelerated, opening up a hole which allowed fuel to spill out onto a series of ignition sources. 50 cc's of fuel were used each time the apparatus was fired. The speed and deceleration used on this track were considered initially to be a reasonable approximation to the crash situation and the apparatus was used for convenient sorting tests. First, a run at normal speed using kerosene. Next, a run in slow motion, again using kerosene. Finally, a run using modified kerosene. In the final simulated crash test program, a rocket-propelled sled was used to carry a tank containing 10 or 20 gallons of the fuel under test. In the standard test, the sled was run into an aircraft arrestor wire, subjecting it to an average deceleration of 5 or 10 g, depending on the speed. The weighted rubber bung, sealing the slit in the leading edge, was ejected on impact and fuel sprayed onto an array of ignition sources. The severity of the test could be adjusted by varying the number and position of ignition sources as well as the sled speed. At an impact velocity of approximately 80 miles an hour, kerosene always ignited, even with only one ignition source. One half percent of the first additive used produced a fuel which did not ignite even when projected through an almost complete wall of flame. Notice how a small flame does not propagate through the mist, but extinguishes itself. More recent additives produce no fire at all at concentrations of 0.3% or less, even under the most severe conditions where two rockets are used. It's been shown that these conditions are close to those to be expected in a severe but potentially survivable crash occurring at 80 miles an hour when an aircraft is brought to rest after a single impact. Another case is when an aircraft continues to move on after being damaged on initial impact. The run-on test is used to simulate this situation, the slit in the tank being covered by a ceiling strip which is torn off when the rocket is fired. While the rocket is burning, the slit is accelerated and no fuel is lost. As soon as the rocket ceases to burn, friction deceleration causes the fuel to spill from the forward-facing slit. With kerosene, the result is spectacular. Fuel spilled from the tank forms a fine mist, ignition occurs almost immediately, and flame readily propagates through the mist to form a continuous wall of fire behind the moving tank. When the sled stops, it's surrounded by burning fuel. In complete contrast to this, fuel containing one half percent additive produces no ignition. Slight flaring of the ignition sources as the sled passes is probably due to air turbulence. Even one quarter percent of additive produces no flame. Both types of test demonstrate in the clearest possible way the very considerable advantages to be obtained from small quantities of fuel additive in reducing the fire hazard of kerosene type fuels. This film has shown only the spectacular benefits that may result from this line of research. It must be emphasized, however, that many problems remain to be solved before such fuels can be put to practical use. Conventional aircraft fuel pumps show reduced efficiencies when handling the modified fuels. The fuels are difficult to filter with existing aircraft equipment and certain additives may cause difficulties in the presence of water. Deposits may also form in the cooler parts of engines using the modified fuels, particularly under idling conditions. All these problems are being investigated at RAE and elsewhere. Much research remains to be done, therefore, before we know whether fuels of this type can be used in aircraft and their very considerable increase in fire resistance can be of benefit to the airline passenger.